there are thousands of VS Code extensions out there. So it's easy for really good extensions to get lost in the sauce, which is why I'm going to show you one of my favorite VS Code extensions that's made my life as a developer way easier. It's called the REST client, and it allows you to send HTTP requests from inside of VS Code. Scrolling through the documentation here, you can see that it's very robust and has a ton of functionality. And my strongly held opinion is that it's better than Insomnia and it's better than Postman. I know there are some people out there who want me to go stick my head in the toilet because they love those tools. But let me give you a quick demo and I'll show you why REST client is my number one. And side note, there is a link to the completed code in the description and subscribe if you like the channel. First things first, here's some context. So I have a Hono REST API that manages books and it saves those books to this SQLite database here and we can see the list of books. Now, if I come look at the routes, I have two routes. I have a get route that will fetch all the books from the database and then I have a post route that will create a new book. And an important call out here is that this post route has auth middleware, which means authentication is required. Now, I want to test out my API and make sure that it's actually working. I could write some automated tests with Jest or Vtest, but I'd love to be able to start up this whole application, hit these endpoints, and see the results. And that's where the REST client comes in. I'll show you a basic example before jumping into the more advanced stuff. So the extension will recognize files that end in .http or .rest. So if I create a new file here, and it ends with .http, and then I go ahead and add in a request, to my health endpoint, just for easy testing, we can see here in the index TS, I have this health endpoint. All it does is return healthy. So if the server's up and running, it should respond with that. And now the next thing I need to do is start my server locally. So I can do that with bun run dev because I have a bun project and I'm um, serving here on port 3000. So then we can see the send request button has appeared up here. And if I click this, then we get our response and we can see we got a 200 OK and we got our status of healthy. So the extension's working and we can see our API is working too, which is really cool. Now I wanna get my list of books and we can add multiple requests to a single file by separating them with three hash signs like this. And this can also be treated as a comment. So I can say, get all books. And then I can add in my URL down here. And now I can test this one as well. And perfect, I'm getting back my list of books. So as you can see, we can start to build out all of our requests in this file and we could even spread it out across multiple files. And this serves as living documentation that can be pushed up to GitHub. And that's one of the biggest advantages of REST client over Postman. Postman keeps all of your requests in a separate application where REST client keeps everything right next to your code. Now let's get into something more advanced, how to work with cookies when using this extension. So if I wanna test out my create books route, the one that requires authentication, I'm using BetterAuth here, and BetterAuth puts a token inside of a cookie. So first, let's see if I hit my create books endpoint, I should get rejected. So I can add another request here, create a book, and to do a post request, I simply put the word post in front of the URL. And then I also want to specify the content type and we'll need a post body with some data. And you see, I get some autocomplete here. So content type and then application JSON. There we go. And then you want to leave one space, add the curly braces and 
to create a book for this application, I need a title, author, and a publish date. So first we'll do the title. Now the author. And finally, the publish date. Publish date. There we go. So if I hit this, I should get rejected. Perfect. We get a 401 unauthorized, which is what we're expecting. So that means my authentication is set up correctly. Now, in order to get a cookie with an auth token, I need to create an account, and I can do that from here as well. So BetterAuth has an API endpoint for creating an account. So if I add a new request in here, this is a post request. To API auth sign up slash email. And I'll also specify the content, sorry, content type, not content length. Ooh, it's being feisty with me. Content type of application JSON. And then in order to sign up, I need a name, email, and password. All right, that should do it. Now, if I click send request, there we go. I get a 200 OK. And if I expand this a little bit, we can see this cookie. So set cookie, better auth session token. So that's my authentication token that I want right there. And here's some additional data. So just like email and name that we get back. But I want to use this cookie in my follow up request inside of this request here. And lucky for us, REST client does this automatically. It will save the cookie that we just got back. And then if I send this follow-up request, we get a 201 created this time instead of the 401 unauthenticated. Now, if you ever wanna send a request without a cookie, you can do that too. So if I come back over to my create a book, you add a single hash sign there and add no cookie jar. So now the cookie will not be sent. And if I send this request, I get the 401 unauthorized. And if you ever need to access the cookie for some reason and you, or you wanna delete it, then REST client will store the cookie in this file and I'll show you here. So I'm on a Windows, so it stores this in a dot REST client folder underneath my user and then in the file cookie.json. So if I open this up, here we can see that the cookie is stored here in this file. And if I wanted to delete it, I could delete it from here. The next thing I wanna show you is file variables. So as you can see, I have this base URL repeated all over the place in this file. And it would be really nice if I could just have one instance of this and reuse it. So if I ever needed to change it, I could do that very easily. And we can do that with file variables. So if I come up to the top here and I say at base URL, and then I set it equal to this URL here, just like that, now we can use this variable throughout the file. So if I go ahead and highlight all of these, all right, got them all highlighted and delete. And then we want to do double curly brace and then base URL. Oop, ended up with a couple more curly braces than we wanted. There we go. And now if I test this out, send request, there we go. We get the healthy response. We can even use these file variables inside of our JSON payloads. So for example, if I want to use this password in multiple places, I can go ahead and set that up here. 
and then come back down to my payload, type in password, and I get autocomplete, hit enter, and it puts it in for me, which is awesome. So now, if I want to create a new account, let's say test123, I send the request. So here I'm getting an error. This is actually a better auth error because the, the cookie is being sent to this endpoint and it's not expecting that cookie. So we actually want to just take this, paste it down here. And if I send the request again, there we go. We get the 200 OK and we have created a new user. Now I'm going to show you prompt variables, which will ask us for an input when we send the request. For example, when I'm signing up a new user, I want to use a different email almost every time. So I'd rather that it just ask me what the email is instead of keeping this here. So we can do that by adding a single hash here and then add prompt. And then I can say email. And then if I come down here to the email, we put email just like that. And now if I send this request, we can see there's that pop up there and I can say test 456 at test.com, hit enter and it sends it off and we get the 200 okay. And we can see the email here was in fact that test 456 email that I input. So this is great for any kind of um, data that really needs to be dynamic. Now, what if we have separate staging and production environments that you want to be able to test against? We can do that with REST Client too. So if I go over to the documentation that I have and we pull up environments and I come down to the environment section, here we go. We can add this configuration to VS Code in order to work with different environments. So let's go ahead and copy this and then jump back over. And then I can go to my settings and pull up the JSON version of the settings. Scroll down to the bottom. Ooh, doo -doo. All right, and then add this in here. And let's take a look at what we have. So there's this shared environment. I'm actually not gonna be using these shared um, variables, but you could reference these shared variables down here where you can see there's a different token for production and local. So for this demo though, I don't need that. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of that, leave it empty. And then for local, really what I want is just a base URL. So if I change this and make this localhost 3000 and then I don't have a production environment for this because this is just a demo app but if I did I could say that this was maybe HTTPS uh, at example.com so it would look something like that and then if we jump back over to our client so currently the base URL is up here as a file variable, but if I comment that out, we're getting this error. So we have one more step. We open up the command palette. We do rest client, and then we look for switch environment. And now you can see I have the local and production environments. So if I choose local, our error messages go away, and it's now using the base URL that we put in here. So I can send this request, and we get the healthy response, so we know that everything's working. The last thing I'm going to show you is that we can easily convert these requests into different snippets. For example, if I right click here on this request, I can come down and copy this request as curl. Some people prefer curl, so it's great to have that option. And then I could even put this curl command down here, paste it, and I can run this curl command directly from inside of this HTTP file. And there we go, we get the healthy response. And then I can also copy this snippet as JavaScript. So if I right click, generate code snippet, and then it gives me all these options, I can choose JavaScript, 
gives me all these various JavaScript options. I can choose fetch. And here we go. I get the JavaScript fetch snippet ready to go. And this is great because then I can use this as a template uh, for making requests from the front end. This extension has even more functionality that I don't have time to cover in this video, but I hope you learned something and I hope I proved my point that this, this extension is an absolute game changer and it enables you to have all of your HTTP logic living right alongside your code. Happy coding and Godspeed.